Good evening. The Armstrong School District Board of Directors regular monthly meeting of March 13th, 2017 is about to begin. If you would stand with us for a moment of reflection, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Burdell. Here. Mr. Johnson. Here. Mr. Close. Here. Ms. Lowe. Here. Dr. Lobby. Here. Mr. Mulroy. Mr. Rarick. Here. Mr. Scaife. Here. Ms. Walker. Here. The Board of School Directors of Armstrong School District convened an executive session on Monday, March 13th at 7 o'clock p.m. in the faculty lounge of West Hills Intermediate School in Katani for discussion of personnel and real estate. Okay, any additional reports this evening from uh, in addition to last week's? Yeah, we have a presentation tonight. I'll let Mr. Kirk uh, introduce our representative from the architectural firm. Yeah, tonight we have Matt Hansen with us uh, from ICAM Architects. If you recall, we uh, hired ICAM to uh, design the athletic complex uh, up at the new Armstrong Junior Senior High School. Uh, I believe Matt will talk about the process. We formed a committee of 2025 20, different members throughout the community. We've met three times so far and had some really uh, great meetings where a lot of thoughts were thrown out there and I think tonight uh, he's kind of going to bring a culmination to that show you what we've come up with and then um, we will present to the community on April 3rd which is a Monday night at 7 p.m. up the Armstrong Junior Senior High School huh? uh, yeah we've been having a lot of fun We've been having a lot of fun last month. We started on uh, February 6th, I think. We met with this committee we call it our SDAT, our Stadium Design Advisory Team. And the makeup of that is really important. It's, it's um, a collection of individuals that represent different pieces of our community. Uh, we have administrators, certainly. We have some teachers, faculty. We have some coaches uh, representing all the different uh, elements of the athletics. Uh, we have a band uh, represented there. Uh, but importantly, we have students also on the committee. And they've been able to provide some interesting insight uh, to We think that we may have uh, seen enough in, in our experience to answer a lot of the questions, but it's really refreshing to, to understand what their perspective is and kind of see the world through their lens and include that in the discussions that, that we have. So I'm going to take us through pretty quickly. There's a lot of slides here, but I'm going to move uh, real quick. If, if something jumps out, please stop me. Uh, this doesn't need to be a formal presentation. It can be more of a dialogue um, for, for sure. But I want to start with the process. Um, at ICAM, we really do believe that for many voices come one vision. Every project that we do, we like to start it with these kinds of committees. We want to gather information. Uh, we don't come to the table thinking that we've got this thing solved and we just need to un unfold it and say ta -da and walk away. Uh, we, we want there to be a discussion, dialogue. Uh, we think that that leads to the best results. Um, our process is about understanding, exploring, and deciding. And for the, a large portion of our, our first three meetings, uh, we were really understanding and exploring. And only recently have we been able to, to start to make some decisions. And we've also uh, created some tools that will help us make uh, decisions down the road. And I'll get to those uh, in a second. Uh, this is our schedule, and I'm guessing you probably can't read all the text there, but uh, I'll, I'll kind of point out the highlights. These, these truck or diamond shapes are the SDAT team meetings. Uh, we started on February 6th, we had another one on February 13th. Most recently we met on February 27th. We were scheduled to meet tomorrow, but the weather hasn't really cooperated. So I've got an arrow that we're going to push that, that meeting for a couple of weeks um, to, to kind of wrap things up and, and also prepare for an important event, which is our community summit. We also have scheduled time and was supposed to do that tomorrow. Uh, to meet with the, the representative communities that aren't included uh, directly in the ESTAT uh, team. That's our maintenance department, our facilities department, our school safety uh, department. We want to really uh, bounce ideas off them and, and get their input before we make any final decisions uh, in terms of schematic, schematic plan. Uh, this, is, this is really the process that takes place before uh, uh, the bulk of the design uh, work. Um, 
some highlights from, from the meeting on this thing. So we, we had some, uh, we call it the round robin workshop where we break the, the group up into uh, four different teams. And we had four different stations around the auditorium. All of our meetings have been in high school. Um, and, and we spent 15 minutes brainstorming about a topic. And then we rotate and we move to the next one. And 15 more minutes, it's, it's rapid fire, it's meant to be quick, it's meant to be, um, you know, not a lot of, of vetting of these ideas, just throw them up at the board and see what sticks. Um, so these are just like some examples of the things we talked about. Uh, defining ourselves as a community, how do we define success, identifying some potential roadblocks and how we might deal with those, and then we talked a little bit more about the state of the site itself in this first activity, and uh, really got some great results. Um, what we also like to do is we, we like to turn our SDATs into designers, and we come with a uh, big Google site plan like this, and we come with puzzle pieces. We hand those puzzle pieces to the team without really, really any restrictions. And we ask them to start to think about the placement of these pieces on the site, what, what kind of relationships are important. Some people will, will take a puzzle piece and say, I don't want this on my site at all, throw it away, that's okay. But what's really important is that <coughs> we share these ideas out and we, we uh, nominate a spokesperson in each team to share these ideas independently. The other uh, groups can question their decisions and, and that, that back and forth can really start to, um, to uh, tease out some, some really important things and, and issues. So this is an example. We, we broke the teams up by candy bars. This was the Nestle Crunch team. And uh, this is how they laid their site out. They had some track and field events over behind the, the baseball field. They had a uh, football field. Everybody kind of knows where that needs to go. With the pictures. Uh, parking was, a, was something that they thought about also. What, what really started to develop and come to the surface was this connection between the high school um, and the football field and how do we get our students from point A to point B in a dramatic way. Just with the Butterfinger approach, similar, they had a practice field down here, again, a, a walkway, but they also thought that fans that were parking here be separate from the students in terms of their approach, entrance into the state. Um, another idea was to put all these uh, infield events down below. Uh, they actually had a, kind of a zigzag pattern, but they also put some storage underneath the bleachers if the parking was a theme that was reoccurring and people had it invested. This approach plaza was a big, big theme. They understood that when we have a big event like a football game or a soccer game, not everybody wants to sit down in the bleachers. A lot of parents like to stand up against the fence. We have all this perimeter area, and, and it's also a social event. For, for the young people. They're not always interested about what's happening over there. Um, the, the band is something that catches their attention and they want, they want us to gather around the band um, and, and just socialize in general. So providing that plaza space separate from uh, the seating arrangement was something that, that was uh, certainly discussed. So from that, we went back to our office, we took all these different ideas and we consolidated them into a diagram that could represent uh, essentially the, the consensus that was reached found that this corner was the most appropriate place for the placement of the field house, the locker rooms, the concession stands, the, the uh, restrooms. We identified the, the need for some parking, if, if possible, and then we also uh, honored this idea of this, they started calling it the River Hawk Walk, which was the connection that we talked about between the, the high school and the field house, as well as a separate, potentially separate fan entrance, utilizing the same kind of technique. We also identified a place for what we call an auxiliary concession stand. This would not have plumbing necessarily, but it would be available for, for pits, for roofs, uh, for the mighty power that we can set up some grills to supplement uh, the, the major concession stand as part of the field. We also talked about the, the plain surface itself. We an expert. He's actually part of our design team. We talked about the pros and cons of the monofilament, the slip film, and, and the fast, which is essentially a hybrid between the two. The pros and cons of each. And I think as a, as a group, we kind of landed on this because it represents uh, essentially the best of both worlds in terms of durability, uh, safety, and uh, heal and, and performance. Uh, it, was really it was a really good conversation. It was informational, uh, for sure, and it allows us as a group to, to make really good decisions. Uh, we talked about the different components, the different elements, and also how important it is to get the right people installing this thing because underneath what we see, that makes all the difference in the world for a, for a successful installation. Um, but uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about were the guiding principles. This was another workshop that we did. We broke the teams up 
came up into four different groups. We separated them into different corners. We gave them a big white pad. We gave them some examples of what guiding principles might be. And we asked them to brainstorm uh, ideas for, for themselves. And so we'll, the way we describe guiding principles, these are the rules that will allow us as a design team and as a committee to make very informed decisions that are consistent with the mission and vision of this project. We've identified what that mission is. We believe we come together in consensus of vision. But we need to be, there are going to be thousands of questions that come up between now and when we cut the ribbon on this thing. We want to make sure that we're answering those questions while being consistent to, to what this community's direction to us has been. So um, we, we can scatter, scatter storm these things out on the wall, pin them up on the wall, and we get everybody little stickers. Uh, three stickers, color-coded, and we directed them to place, basically vote for the most important guiding principle to them. Uh, and, and honor that with, with the green sticker or the orange sticker or the blue sticker um, in, that, in that order. It's thus in the auditorium. That's the results. What you're seeing, I don't know if you can read it, but this got the most votes, and that's great because it says student-centered facility. That was a clear winner. Um, and it was very clear to all of us that all of our decisions need to be made with that in mind. Student-centered facility, and we need to honor that. So we took a little guiding principles and now the words that can be used. We get some English professors in and we start to play around with the different, uh, different elements to try to make them as descriptive, but also want them to be directional. We want these to be actions or commands to the design team to go forth with, with these in mind. So these are, are what we, we consider to be our final guiding principles, to be an inclusive student-centered facility with a focus on athletics and academics. So we saw where the folks were. Uh, we want it to be a functional welcoming experience for a variety of student activities and athletic events. We want it to be a source of Riverhawk pride that energizes spectators and maximizes our home field, home field advantage. We want to keep our commitment to be a safe and accessible space for students on campus. We want to be an accessible resource for, by providing a home for family and community events. And importantly, we want to be fiscally responsible with this investment now and for the future. There's a lot that goes into that. Uh, we understand that by making the commitment to an athletic playing surface, that's a commitment that gets replaced every 10 years roughly on that. Not just today that we're worried about the budget, it's, it's for the life of this building, and we need to keep that in mind as we make these. So another breakout activity. This was another day where we gave more puzzle pieces. We, we started big, we started broad, we were zoomed out on Google Earth. Now we're zooming in on the field house. We gave everyone puzzle pieces. Um, things that would be part of that, that field house, locker rooms, restrooms, uh, training facilities, offices potentially, conference space, whatever we felt might be included in that. We gave them scissors, we gave them tape. Some people tore those in half because we made it too big and they wanted it to be a different size. There were no restrictions. This is a, a group <coughs> that these teams needed to, to vet these, these things out with each other and come to a consensus within these four or five group uh, member teams. And then again, share this out. Defend your decision, defend your ideas, and, and the other teams will question. Pretty, pretty fun activity. Um, differing levels of ability with respect to scissors in the room, but we did okay. No real injuries. But we came up with uh, four different concepts. Again, this is focused on the corner of the building for the most part. And this, this group actually broke the building up into two with the uh, River Hawk Walk entering between kind of the fan amenities and the player amenities. These are dressing rooms, into restrooms, and concessions. The next group decided, well, if we consolidate that into a really small footprint, we can have all this extra space available for the plaza. And that was important to them. And actually, this is one of the students who created this grand entrance. They wanted this to be a celebratory thing. And so this was three dimensional. And there's some tape actually holding it up. But they, they really thought that this was important to, to know, uh, celebrate that entrance experience. Another group, again, focused on the corner, but, but again, trying to consolidate that. But they really felt like this student entrance concept was worth pursuing uh, the student entrance with the fan entrance on the other side. And in this group, again, plaza was really a big thing. They separated the entrance. They, they brought it together in the middle. So we took all of that information. They defended that out. And we took it back to our office and we had to, to bring it together into some plans, some diagrams that we could further that discussion. This was the corner. Scheme. This was the, the singular bar at the bottom scheme. And this was the consolidated footprint that we rotated over here because we were falling off the hillside on this side. We couldn't, couldn't do that from a uh, 
a site grading perspective. Um, when we did this, we actually made whiteboards out of all of these diagrams so we could draw, and we drew out all the different experiences that one might have as a fan, as a student, as an athlete, as a band member. Um, we tried to think of all the different people that are going to be experiencing this building and walking through their experience with this. And as we did that, sorry, the corner building really stood out. This one made the most sense, but we thought that this, the, the dual entrance um, wasn't, the more we talked about it, we were basically taking the pot of money that we could spend on this, this grand entrance. We are breaking in half. We are getting less grand entrances in two different areas. There was also a, a crowd control issue with that. Security uh, wasn't optimal, so we, we always kind of fell back to this corner diet. So this obviously meant we needed to make some decisions. And, and as a team, we went back um, and, and developed this site plan. You, you're familiar with your school, the, the plan uh, for the, the field and the stadium, but with the uh, field house now on the corner with this Riverhawk walk, and it takes that circuitous route because of the existing grade change. We want this to be an accessible pathway. That was one of our, our principles. We don't want anyone to have to navigate steps. Um, there are some steps over here as a secondary route, but this being the main um, procession as, from, the, from the school into the stadium, we needed that to be at a 5%. Um, but that is essentially a lot of discussion, three days worth, um, brought into, into this concept that we are now going to pursue and turn that into a building. You're only at this point because of the input and all of the ideas that were generated by our workshops and the creativity of the together. Now, the, that group, one of the, the main ground rules for being in that group is that they were not allowed to keep anything that we discussed in that room in secret. Their mandate was to share this stuff out. Um, you don't want anything to be perceived as being decided behind closed doors or in secret meetings. It's part of our DNA as a firm, and I believe part of our mandate is, is uh, th for this project to be very public and very open about these decisions. And, and by having a committee, by having a consensus with a lot of different stakeholders from a broad range of backgrounds, we're able to confidently say that this is a, a facility that will represent the best interests of the community. I'll end with the floor plan that has been developed. Uh, based on all of that, we have all of our player amenities, athlete amenities down here, all of our fan amenities. Up here you can see the uh, insane number of toilets necessary to support a 3,000 um, stadium. Um, concession stands, we have the home locker room that's indicated by the blue. We're not allowed to call this the visiting locker room. That's the uh, previous decision. We're calling it the auxiliary locker room that may be inhabited by visitors uh, if we decide to allow them, but uh, it's really for other other athletics in the, in the building as well to provide some versatility for that uh, and all the training spaces, film study, coaching offices. So that's, this is basically the, the latest development for us uh, that we'll be sharing out and, and getting some feedback and input from the team the next time we meet. Um, this is an axonometric of what that really looks like with two building uh, concept with the gateway arch in the middle. That from this river hot walk and how uh, we're going to celebrate some of the, the uh, branding and identity of, of this entrance in you know, very preliminary, but we're going to add the detail and add to the design of the space. Um, I'll finish up with the project schedule. Um, this is <coughs> Where we are right now, we've essentially completed this visioning workshop with the exception of the last meeting. That is really our preparation for the community summit. We're into schematic design. We hope to be bidding by August from the, the field house piece. But while we're doing all of this fun stuff, we're moving ahead with the field, the <coughs> surface, the track, and the bleachers so that we're ready to play uh, September 2017. That has us bidding at the end of April. That's coming up quickly. Uh, we're on track to mm -hmm. next steps, further development, um, getting those bid packages ready to go, getting them on the street, uh, getting some real numbers from the, the contractors so that we have a better understanding of uh, where we stand from the cost perspective and uh, uh, budgets to make sure we're online all the way through. And uh, the community summit, as I mentioned, uh, we, we want to come.
third, I believe. April 3rd. We'll reschedule that for us. We're hoping we can get a lot of participants, a lot of questions, hopefully, and we can share with you more information at that time. Good. Any questions for Matt? I mean, I think you guys can see there's been a lot of involvement from everybody there. Uh, and this truly was the committee's thoughts and ideas that went into it. And you know, we all, people there voted on different steps along the way, what was going to be included, what wasn't going to be included. So uh, yeah, I think, uh, we're pretty excited about it and I think the group is as well. It's good. Okay. Right. All right. Thanks, Matt. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah, you need to. Six, yeah, we're, we're trying, we're a bunch around six million. Right, any uh, additional reports? That's it. Yeah, yep, you got some money. Uh, yeah, in Lenape, we met on February 16th. Um, they did get a high mark grant, um, which they're using to create a food bank, possibly clothing, but they have students who are on their own up at the high school, so they're uh, looking at doing that. Um, the big news, I guess, for us is that uh, from 1415, we had some credits uh, for the new roof that wasn't used. So we're, I think we did get the check, I think, of Sam, if I remember <coughs> Sam. We got a check back for $287,753.46. And then we are also getting a hundred and some thousand dollars uh, back. Also, we're not getting it back in a check. We're getting it, uh, they'll apply that to what we owe. Student kind of tuition, year. you know, our student enrollment, yeah. Yeah. Our, our payments are reduced. Yeah, our payments will be reduced, so, you know, so that we'll do it that way. That was the big news from Menopi. Um, from Aaron, um, uh, Cliff Geary, some of you know Cliff, he was appointed, uh, reappointed as the board treasurer, uh, continuing through uh, June 3rd of 2017. Um, and then uh, also we have uh, adopted the budget, tentatively adopted the general operating budget for $3,270,419. Um, they will be, that will be voted on at the convention. Uh, Jim is available. He said Mr. Wagner is available for, and he's willing to come to board meetings to discuss anything as far as Aaron programs, but again, our request. And they are investigating other avenues to bring in revenue to the IU. Um, one example is that, uh, other schools, districts in other IUs are asking them to come in perhaps to their payroll, monitor their business office uh, operations. And of course, you know, we would, you know, IU would be pay, paid a fee to do that. And they're also looking, I think, uh, they've been approached to possibly doing a solar farm uh, on the property out back. So looking at some avenues that way um, to generate some uh, money, of course, to keep the, you know, our costs in mind. Any questions on any of that? Okay. Public comments on agenda items this evening. We have a formal request from uh, Mr. Don Maines. Technically, he's Secretary
I'm going to propose two things. You just, just, it's exploratory, really, and that is to uh, on the fields. Once you vacate those totally, the baseball field, the football field, the parking lot, I want to propose that we put senior housing there. Uh, as many units as safely can be done, a stack on each other. Um, would have amazing views north of the Allegheny River, amazing views south of the Allegheny River. It'd be a great gift from the school district to do this, and I'm proposing they'd be all made of glass, um, primarily glass. We live in a glass building in D.C., um, and it works well. Um, and then for the high school, um, again, it's a, a center part of our town. Fort City is a classic American company town, um, and uh, uh, it still has remained its integrity because of our small growth in Armstrong County. Um, so, what I propose there, I came to you before about the front part, the 1908 part. Um, that's the part that literally thousands of immigrants came here, and so that was a great united. We probably wouldn't have any other state, place in the United States as small as Fort City and Armstrong County is to have that kind of uh, population of immigrants. And these were all from 10 Eastern and Southern European countries. You bought the best glass artisans in the world. And we have many generations here that are here now. What I'm going to propose for the back of the school is tear it down. And I propose there would be a building, a glass building. Um, a glass building that will be of international attention because I'm proposing we create the Ford City Glass College. It's not a college in a sense. It's more like an art institute. Dr. Selesky, Dr. Selesky. Um, she had the vision, Dr. Selisky had the vision to go to Pittsburgh, see the Pittsburgh Glass Center, and Dr. Selisky, it's that concept. So if they have any questions, they can ask me then. Um, it would be an old glass building, it would be an international design competition uh, on celebration of Ian Pei, the famous architect who did the pyramid, glass pyramid in front of the Louvre Museum in Paris. It would be to honor his 100th birthday, which is next year. Um, and again, it would be an international competition. At first, it felt like a two or three story building, but somebody could come along maybe about that size, but they could have a sphere uh, that would go high, never as higher than any of our church steeples, uh, but it would be all glass and it could be illuminated inside with different colors and patterns. Um, and again, it would be programs like you would have six months program or year programs. Um, we would have students stay in people's homes, people could offer if they wanted to house students. And uh, I'm just interested in sitting down with you. If you don't want to sit do this, I understand. I, I, I had an experience before. My first boss in Washington, D.C. was Barbara Bush. So I went to many, 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 many schools. And uh, this would be an opportunity for us. And I know you're not the kind of school district that doesn't return phone calls or doesn't meet. Mr. DeVivo was kind enough to meet with me a few times. Not about this, though. But if you look at that picture, though, you'll see the big field. That's my top priority, which is jobs for there, pursuing two to three businesses. And, and then um, the other two projects are the field. What the article is inside is that's an article I got in the Wall Street Journal um, uh, about the battle, not the battle, the dissension between Fort City and PPG. Well, it was all resolved, and PPG spent $5 million to clean up the 46 acres. And again, I hope you'll do it, because if you don't do it, I will be forced to stand in front of the building with five letters, and it'll, they'll be all be gold, and it'll be plastered against the Fort City High School, and what will happen is, it's there, and if you choose to tear it down, you will be, uh, the sand will be media from all over the world. There will be hellfire raining down, um, because that word that I will stand up there, and if it's only me, it's only me, and it will say T-R-U-M-P, just like his hotel. I'm not talking about any political persuasions at all, but that's how important it is to be able to sit down with you all and talk about this. So that's all I'm asking you to do. Let's sit down and talk about the fields and uh, possibly senior housing, glass, um, the back of the school. Um, again, if you feel that you need to tear it down, and I understand that's not a structurally sound, uh, but glass. And again, I believe it's, 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 it will give us international attention so finally, what I'm asking the school board here, and by the way, let me say this, there's been some concern because it said that Fort City lost a $10 million project and got a $586,000 fine. You were hearing here the first time, you were hearing the first time that nobody from Fort City caused that $10 million project to fail. First time it's being said, um, talking to some national media right now, and also with this, because they came in from 10 different countries, the immigrants, the last artisans, um, I've started, contacting with friends who are working at the White House now, 
uh, start contacting these heads of state to invite them to come here. So I've started that already, that process. Again, I love to show the new school. You all were geniuses to do that. I mean, it's fantastic. There was a gentleman, very successful graduate. He, I said, oh, they have a million dollar view. He said, no, they have a $10 million view. He was that impressive with all. So please, just sit down with us. No, with me. Um, or City Borough Council doesn't know this yet. I'm going after the county commissioner. I mean, I'm going to the county commissioners on on Thursday, and then for City, I'll go two uh, two months uh, two weeks from today. Uh, when I travel the world with both presidents, and I do travel the world with, world with them, um, I would travel on as diplomatic status. All of that is because I'm a graduate of the <coughs> Armstrong County School District. I swear to you, I got to work in the White House for eight years, and it's because I graduated from this school district here. So thank you. I hope we'll talk. And Mr. Vigo, I want to thank you. And Linda Ambrose, I want to thank you, too. Um, and I hope we can pursue this with you all. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay, entertain a motion and second for approval of the minutes from the open caucus session of February 9th. And the regular meeting of February 13th. Okay. Mr. Eric, over second. Mr. Bernal. Uh, any questions, comments, or corrections on those minutes? Roll call, please. Ms. Lote. Yes. Dr. Lobby. Yes. Mr. Rarick. Yes. Mr. Scape. Yes. Ms. Walker. Yes. Mr. Burdell. Yes. Mr. Chauncey. Yes. Mr. Close. Yes. Number <coughs> voting yes, eight. Number voting no, zero. One absent. Motion carries. Yeah, under the bills, four categories listed, food service, capital projects, fund, uh, presentation of the regular monthly bills for payment, all three of those for February, and the athletic fund from January. Mr. Rarick, can I have a second? Uh, Ms. Lote. Any further discussion on those bills, those, any of those categories? Roll call, please. Dr. Lobby. Yes. Mr. Rarick. Yes. Mr. Scave. Yes. Ms. Walker. Yes. Mr. Burdell. Yes. Mr. Tronsick. Yes. Mr. Close. Yes. Ms. Lode. Yes. Number voting yes, eight. Number voting no, zero. One absent. Motion carries. Personnel items one through 15, uh, with the exception of 7, 10, 14, 15, which are for information only. Uh, motion and second for approval of those personnel items. Um, Mr. Scaife, Mr. Burdell. Roll call, please. Mr. Rarick. Uh, yes to everything. I'm going to ex accept for uh, per two, which I'll abstain. Mr. Scaife. Yes. Ms. Walker. Yes. Mr. Burdell. Yes. Mr. Chonsick. Yes. Mr. Close. Yes. Ms. Lowe. Yes. Dr. Lobby. Yes. One abstention on per two. The remaining items, number voting yes, eight. Number voting no, zero. One absent. Motion carries. Uh, education items one and two. Motion and second for approval of those. Uh, Ms. Lope, uh, Mr. Rarick. Further questions on those two education items? Roll call, please. Mr. Scaife. Yes. Ms. Walker. Yes. Mr. Burdell. Yes. Mr. Chonsick. Yes. Mr. Close. Yes. Ms. Lope. Yes. Dr. Lobby. Yes. Mr. Rarick. Yes. Number voting yes, eight. Number voting no, zero. One absent. Motion carries. Uh, business items one through seven. Motion and second for approval. There are seven business items. Mr. Rarick and Dr. Lobby. Uh, any further questions on those business items? Roll call, please. Ms. Walker. Yes. Mr. Burdell. Yes. Mr. Chonsick. Yes. Mr. Close. Yes. Ms. Lowe. Yes. Dr. Lobby. Yes. Mr. Rarick. Yes. Mr. Skate. Yes. Number voting yes, eight. Number voting no, zero. One mm -hmm. absent. Motion carries. Uh, one construction item scheduled for the guaranteed energy savings agreement. Motion and second for approval of one item. Well, Mr. Burdell and Mr. Johnson. Any uh, additional questions on that item? Roll call, please. Mr. Burdell. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Close. Yes. Ms. Lowe. Yes. Dr. Lobby. Yes. Mr. Rarick. Yes. Mr. Scape. Yes. Ms. Walker. Yes. Number voting yes, eight. Number voting no, zero. One absent. Motion carries. Uh, student transportation, one item list of uh, additional bus drivers. Motion second for the approval. Uh, Ms. Lope, have a second. Mr. Rarick. Roll call, please. Mr. Tronsick. Yes. Mr. Close. Yes. Ms. Lope. Yes. Dr. Lobby. Yes. Mr. Rarick. Yes. Mr. Scape. Yes. Ms. Walker. Yes. Mr. Burdell. Yes. 
Number voting yes, eight. Number voting no, zero. One absent. Motion carries. <coughs> uh, two policy items. Motion and second for approval is two policy items. Mr. Eric and Dr. Lobby, uh, leave our solicitor reviewed these two last week. Are there any additional questions on those policies? Roll call, please. Mr. Close. Yes. Ms. Lope. Yes. Dr. Lobby. Yes. Mr. Rarick. Yes. Mr. Scaife. Yes. Ms. Walker. Yes. Mr. Burdell. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Number voting yes, eight. Number voting no, zero. One absent. Motion carries. Two uh, general items. One, the nomination of a board director to the air and IU unit, which uh, Ms. Walker's agreed to fulfill until the end of her term on uh, the ASD board. The other, the operating budget for the air and intermediate unit. Motion and second for approval of those two items. Ms. Walker and Ms. Lake. Uh, questions on Gen 2? Roll call, please. Ms. Lope. Yes. Dr. Lobby. Yes. Mr. Rarick. Yes. Mr. Scave. Yes. Ms. Walker. Yes. Mr. Burdell. Yes. Mr. Chonsick. Yes. Mr. Close. Yes. Number voting yes, eight. Number voting no, zero. One absent. Motion carries. Informational folder. Anything yeah, there's one item in the information folder. It's uh, relative to the Armstrong School District Foundation golf outing. We'll be doing that tomorrow. No, not tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I just had uh, just one question. I don't know if we had any preliminary weather schedule or anything for tomorrow. We're going to wait and see what happens. But no, in the morning, fall my, through the my night. My phone is vibrating out of my pocket. From, <laughs> from the, other, the other superintendent is trying to figure out what's going on. So no, no preliminary decisions yet. Okay. Yeah, we'll look for that in the morning here. A lot of hoopla on the. We, we haven't had a lot of storms, so we got to make the best of the few we get. <laughs> <laughs> Anything additional from board members? And a motion and second for adjournment. Mr. Rick and Mr. Riddell. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Have a safe trip home and enjoy the snow.